What do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. Hey, I'm Andrew with Omaha Outdoors, and today I'm out at Terran Tactical with Terran Butler himself and the guns of John Wick 3. Can you tell me what I'm dealing with here? I've got a giant MPX right in front of me. Please tell me about this gun. Okay, well, this is our TTI Custom MPX. It's pretty much totally set up for PCC division. Last uh, three years or so, it's, it's just blown up in USPSA. It's just, this is the softest shooting gun for that division possible. We do a little bit to it to make it even nicer. We have a new forearm from Lancer. It's a 17-inch forearm. It matches up with SIG's new 16-inch barrel with their compensator. We have a hyperfire trigger, our magwell, oversized charging handle, uh, everything you do to this thing. The MRO, the Crimson Trace, TLR8, our new buttstock. It's the whole package to make this gun shoot super soft. It's also featured in John Wick Chapter 3. Excellent. And uh, I see a 2011 here. Tell me about this one, please. Yeah, um, in John Wick 2, the best gun we thought of for the movie that the director wanted to pick was a, a Glock 34 Combat Master. It's a 24 round 9mm, does a lot of damage in the catacombs. So he was going to go with this gun, and then Lance Reddick's character comes up and tells him about the Combat Master 2011. It's the same capacity, but this gun can shoot 24 rounds of 9mm major. So what that is, it's a way more powerful 9. It's like a 357 Magnum compared to your 38 Special. So it has a lot more penetration, a lot more stopping power. It's pretty awesome. So there it is. It feels really nice. Wow. points perfectly. Yeah, the gun is set up. It's a 5.4 inch barrel. <clears throat> it's got the butler cut on it, adjustable sights, grip job. This gun's been a little more enhanced uh, for us. This is a gun I got way early on. It is a island barrel setup. Those will be available probably end of the year. Uh, they shoot pretty much the same as the bull barrel. It's just some guys like having the front sight stuck on the barrel. Right. It's pretty cool. Um, they cost more, but right now you get the bull barrel model, which is featured in John Wick Chapter 3. Put a flashlight on it, extreme engineering internals, magwell, ambi safeties, oversized mag release, uh, a new oversized slide release that helped them design that isn't giant or small. It's just right in the middle. It's perfect. Our fiber optic front sight, it's just an awesome gun. This is also a phenomenal gun for three gun division. You couldn't beat this gun for three gun match. There's nothing as good as this gun. It's also in limited division. It's a phenomenal gun. You can shoot it in nine or 40 caliber. Nils Jonasson, phenomenal shooter. Shoots this gun. He already came in first Grand Master at Nationals, one area two with it, literally in a few months. It is the ultimate handgun. Excellent. And I see a 19 here. I'm, I'm always fond of the 19s, so please tell me about the 19. So the 19 is probably the most famous or highest selling carry gun in the world. It's the most popular Glock sold out there because it holds such a crazy capacity and uh, it feels so good. It shoots so good. We take it next level. We do our whole Combat Master package on it. We have a plus five base pad. So this is Halle Berry's gun in this shootout that's gonna blow your mind when you see the movie this weekend. Everything's done to it, our fiber optic sights, trigger job, our grip job, our new magwell. It's small, but it's funneled all the way to the edges like all of our magwells are. You got 21 rounds of nine millimeter. It's just the ultimate little Glock 19. Yeah, I was shooting this one uh, and I was amazed at how fast I was able to run it. I shot my own, I have a stock Glock 19 Gen 2 that I carry a lot. Uh, and I did okay with it, and then I picked this up and I was like 20% faster on every stage. So. Yeah, it's just a combination of all the things. You got the trigger job, you got a better uh, stainless steel guide rod in there, the grip job, angling it better. Glocks have a big bump in the back, they point high. So we flatten that off, we carve it up, and do the best stipple jobs you'll ever see in, in your life. These people are just perfectionists over here. There's the Glock 19. And um, then we have the Benelli. This is the actual Stuntman Benelli from the movie. Okay. Same with this MPX right here. So if you watch the trailer or see the movie, when he runs out of ammo, he hawks this thing and knocks the guy out. So this is the Stuntman gun. It's rubber, it's molded after the actual gun from the movie. Same thing with the Benelli. In the movie, he's doing something never seen before in Hollywood, in any movie ever, is quad loading. So when John Wick 2 came out, he was loading old school weekend out of a caddies and that was all great, and that was appropriate for that time. Then when caddies got better, like Safari Lands, which hold the rounds a lot tighter, I thought, we gotta go next level in the movie, so what's the fastest way to load that isn't a box-fed shotgun? Quad loading. So he's flipping over, quad loading like crazy in the movie. Trained his butt off in real life. Even I see my friend come out with the other day. He's really good at it, does all the fun trickery ways to load the gun in the movie, you'll love it. So there's a Stuntman Vanilli. <laughs> and a Stuntman MPX, which yeah. he knocks someone out with. 
And then, then I see uh, some tiny ones hiding over here. Yeah, in the movie, Halle Berry uh, has a little uh, SIG 365. Uh, this one we customize. It's got an iron bonded barrel. It's got uh, a little stipple job. Not a lot to do to this gun. It's pretty much out of the box, good to go, but it is slippery out of the box. So we stipple it, ion bond it, logo it up. The sights are good the way they come. Uh, highest capacity little gun on the planet. I think it's a phenomenal carry gun. Very cool. And it's got a plus 12 uh, reload mag. So you got 13 rounds of nine in that little tiny gun. So in the movie, the gun is customized by Bruce Gray, Gray Guns. Well, can we shoot some of these? Yeah. Cool. Let's get to it. Shooter ready, stand by. Good, so 1020. Way faster. That advice on the transitions killed it. But if it was a competition, you had one miss on the first target. But if it's a three gun competition, it doesn't, doesn't hurt you. Because in three gun, an A zone hit or a head hit doesn't add time. If you get two anywhere on the target, doesn't add time. But if you get one out of the A zone and a miss, that adds five seconds. So you shot it clean in a three gun match in 10 seconds. But if it was a USPSA match, that miss would have added probably three seconds roughly. They have a different factor how they do things. So try to always never miss, but a three gun match, you still pulled it off. That was awesome. You got crazy splits. Thank you. You're a really good shooter. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, did you have fun shooting these guns? Yeah. You know, I, I've shot a lot of customized Glocks before. I, I have a couple. Um, sometimes I'll pick them up and I'll be less accurate and not as fast as I am with my stock ones. Mm. But these, I was like, clearly, like every time I was shooting, I was clearly shooting faster and more accurately. So I, I'm very impressed. Well, it, the tr our guy that does our trigger jobs, we have two guys, they, they're amazing. My guy originally that taught my new guy, I've been, he's been in my world since I started. So back in like 94, he started doing my trigger jobs on my ARs. When I started TTI, I had to have him. So I brought him back from Australia. He is a huge part of this company. All the triggers are done by him and now uh, his new guy with him. And that's a huge part of it. A lot of, guns do, a lot of guys do a nice looking gun but they don't do the trigger. Without the trigger, it's like a really beautiful Ferrari with a top speed of 60 miles an hour. So you've got to have a, tr a great trigger job that works. A lot of guys will do light trigger jobs, but a little, a little while into it, they're going fully auto or there's issues. So you've got to have companies that do really good triggers. Plus the rest of the gun, the grip jobs, everything feels good. The sights stand out. We came out with a front sight. This is our new front sight for the 2011 where the fiber optic is at the very top of the dot. The dot is at the very top. When I first got into shooting, I've always shot iron sights. So years ago, a lot of guys were switching over to fiber optics. It's the new way, you know. I don't like, you know, DVD, I like my VHS. So <laughs> finally I gave in. But what I hated at first, and I didn't like how they shot at first, the dot was way below a big black blade. And I shot black blades forever and I didn't know where to shoot. And I was shooting low, shooting high, doing weird. Right. So I started grinding the top off. So finally I'm like, you know what, I'm tired of that. I gotta do it myself. Plus other fiber optic front sights, they're half embedded in the steel. If you look at this one from the side, the fiber optic rod is sitting on the floor. That gives you light from all the way around the rod, not just the top half only. Right. Uh, the, and the diameter of it is perfect with the rear sight. Just take a look at it, you see how it just draws your eye to the front is what's really important to do well at matches. Guys like, I want red dots in the back and I want fiber and I yeah. want night sight and I want, it's too busy, it's too much nonsense. You wanna see the front sight if you're any kind of a shooter It'll be in the rear sight, in the rear notch, in the proper way. When I, I, I set up like three or four of my Glocks with fiber optic front, plain rear, um, and I think I'm going to have to switch them out to this one because I can shoot much better with this. I really like it. Yeah, we have them for Glocks in 2011s. Yeah. That is nice. Can I see you shoot this? Sure. Shooter ready. Stand by. One pickup shot. 760. Awesome. A little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> Can you believe that? It takes us that long to like, I don't know, just have the pistol. Yeah, it takes me that long to like start thinking about shooting. Yeah. Have you uh, done any local competition stuff or anything at all? Uh, the only competition I've ever done is something called the 24 hour sniper adventure challenge. It was like an adventure race. Oh yeah. We're like going over, you know, competition dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did that. Um, and there were like, there were pistol and, and carbine stages. 
Uh, we came in third, but it was mostly about like land nav. Well, look into like a local like local match, USPSA match or whatever. Don't jump into three gun right out of the gate. It's too much. Yeah. Local pistol match, you could bring get a PCC rifle, get a Glock 34, or whatever, a cool pistol high cap. Shoot limited division, probably minor at first just to get started. Uh, you can shoot production things like that, but just shoot limited minor. Doing one reload a stage, and it's in ten thousand reloads a second. Or you can shoot production either way. Uh, and then you can shoot the same match again with your PCC gun. So while you're on one stage, you shoot twice. Don't shoot all the way through and come back through. That's a nightmare. But it's like you're two guys in the same squad, but it's still you. It's a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. You can't wear flip flops. <laughs> He's got to wear the flip flop. Just tape with duct tape all over him. Well, it's awesome having you out here. Yeah. Thank you. Can we can we do like real quick the axe throwing? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Wow. So just trying to be smooth. You gotta be consistent like anything in life. You can't have a different throw every time. When I throw, I, I wanna throw hard. See guys throw it like a dart. Say it doesn't stick, at least it's gonna damage something if I throw with crazy velocity. Right. So I throw with high velocity and I want speed. I wanna be having a fast transition to the next axe to throw it again. So I basically double tapped all these guys. I think of it like shooting. You know, I got Alpha Charlie, two Alpha, two Alpha, Alpha, two Alpha, or whatever. So that's my mindset. So it's the throw. Put your left foot about here. We'll see if your mark is the same as mine. Your thumb is right there. You kind of hook it. Stare where you want it to go. We'll just go to center target for now, the big fat guy, and just roll through it. I got him in the wiener. Good, perfect. Okay, put those in your left hand. You have them ready to go. And the same grab every time. Take that one. Okay. So let's look at a couple things really quick. You're going good, then you kind of change velocities. That yeah. caused it to over-rotate. I like these hatchets because they have two, two ways of sticking. Obviously, you prefer the front, but you still got him. Uh, then you went a little, you changed velocity again. You were choking up too high also. When I saw you do that, then it changed. That's why the one fell. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'll get him. Oh, on the dick. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you we had to finish him. walking me <laughs> through all this. Yeah. Maybe I'll get to your axe throwing level at some point. We've got to save something for next time. Right. So to start here, low ready, I'll run the beeper. Go like boom, 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 ding, boom, boom. So what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns.